knowing that every performer, every speaker, everyone present celebrating tonight is totally blessed. And if you, like me, are ready to have a real good time, <laughs> then I invite you to take a deep breath. Let it out with an eye. And together we say, and so it is. What's up, everybody? Scene tonight. Um, I have a couple of things that actually I want to share with you, Peter, before I get started. Uh, first, I think um, I think everybody would agree that you are looking smoking hot in the red dress tonight. <laughs> celebrating our rich history, but even more it's about you and your service for the past 15 years and the growth that the center has experienced over those 15 years. So tonight we just want you to chill out, relax, <laughs> and sit back, look pretty in your red dress, and um, just absorb everything as we attempt to show you how much we love and appreciate all that you do and all that you are. have a super celebration tonight. Yeah. That was good. That was pretty good. That was like, that was like 25 year anniversary good. So I'm going to ask one more time. Are y'all ready to have a super celebration tonight? Yeah. Right? So like that's a round sound or something. So I'm going to get this show on the road. Um, I just want to say that I'm honored to be doing this tonight. And I'm honored to introduce to you a long-standing member of our community as well as a licensed practitioner, Bert Hedden. Now, now, some might say that, what, Dumbledore? That's <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Bert is the Reverend Peter. <laughs> a teacher, a philosopher, and I have found him to be a fountain of wisdom and a friend to all. Tonight, Bert comes to us by way of video to share his perspective on the twists and turns that the center has taken along its 50 year past. And this journey has led us all to be right here, right now, at this moment. So, tune in, let's check out what Bert has to say. I'm CSL Dallas. Hey, I'm Bert Hedden. And now, whoever introduced this video probably told you that I'm older than Bert, but I, I, I think I'm hungry for that remark. It's a bit of an exaggeration. I have been around the center for a long time, however, and that's partly why I'm here tonight. Now, I wish I could be there with you in person because it's a great opportunity to celebrate, but you see, I've been kidnapped. <laughs> My diabolical family has kidnapped me, aided and abetted and led, I must say, by my wife, Cindy, and they hauled me off to Lake Tahoe, California, where there's all kinds of frozen white stuff. On the <laughs> and I think they actually expect me to go out in that stuff, leaving a perfectly warm house, and strap long wooden things on my feet and try to stand or even move me that stuff. Ridiculous I am. By the time you see this, I may well be face down in a stone drip somewhere. <laughs> big dog with a kid of brain. <laughs> But anyway, we're not here to watch video comedy 
at. <laughs> we're here tonight to celebrate, and we're here to celebrate the commemoration, the 50th anniversary of the Center for Spiritual Living in Dallas, and the 15th anniversary of the senior ministry of the lady I call, delighted to call my friend and certainly my spiritual mentor, Reverend Dr. Petra Wellness. So let's start with the history. Now, you probably have by now been told that the Center for Spiritual Living was originally founded or organized in Dallas in 1963. Uh, Reverend G. Amos, I believe, was the uh, original founding minister. And now, contrary to rumor, I have not been a part of the organization all 50 of those years. I discovered the Center for Spiritual Living in about 1972, 73. And what I honestly have been involved with the organization and a part of the organization with greater or lower levels of involvement uh, during the 40 years since then. So during this 40-year period, I've seen, yes, a lot of change. Some change which was heartwarming, and some change which was heartbreaking. You see, in 1972 or three, CSL uh, owned about two acres of land over on Willow Lane. We had two beautiful buildings, a separate standalone sanctuary, and a two-story education building, education office building. During the years that followed, uh, I saw the organization truly ripped apart by internal dissension, perhaps greed, all of the human emotions that we go through in our lives. I saw it struggle for a number of years as a small group just trying to survive in various rented properties around um, with only a handful of, uh, of members. And I am delighted to say that during the last 15 years, I have been fortunate enough to be a part of and to witness the rebirth of the Center for Spiritual Living as a strong and vibrant, healthy organization. So the reason for going through all of this history is to remind all of us, myself included, that buildings and property and assets and even membership numbers are not sufficient, are not even what it takes to build a strong and powerful surviving organization. The thing which I, I truly believe is the secret of the organization which has been created here the thing which is going to ensure its long-term growth and survival, and the thing which I have to say to Petra is the thing that, in my opinion, we owe you the greatest debt of gratitude. is for the creation of an organization in which the leadership operates and manages the organization in accordance with the principles, the spiritual teachings which we teach. An organization in which the mission statement is truly known and understood by, by the entire membership in which the mission, the purpose of the organization truly serves as a guiding principle. An organization with spirit and with soul. And so in summary, I guess I just want to say to all of us who are fortunate enough to be members of the Center for Spiritual Living, congratulations to each of us. And to the leadership, thank you for operating and managing and leading us 
in accordance and in, 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 in acceptance of the principles and the teachings. And finally, I would have to say to Petra, thank you for guiding us through this creative process. Thank you for all that you do. And to all of us, I just want to say, I wish I could be there with you tonight to drink a toast in celebration. Thank you and good night.
that was the perfect song, brother. <sighs> because I also consider this place my home, and this is the perfect lead-in. Um, now, it is everybody who I see here on Sundays that, that make this place my home, but it is also the people that came before me that have played an important role in making this place my home. So I would like to recognize right now the past ministers and the long, long time members from CSL. Now, if you would, when I call your name, would you please just stand and stay stand until um, we finish the list. First, Reverend Chris Terry from Heart Space Spiritual Center. <laughs> Reverend Robert Mitchell from Celebration of God. <laughs> Reverend Lee Wolak. From Agape. <laughs> Reverend Marsha Megapore. <laughs> I was going to say that Reverend Marsha is currently uh, operating from the center of freelancing and living her dream. <laughs> Reverend Larry Gold from Celebration of Life. <laughs> Reverend Patty Generis from Center for Spiritual Life. <laughs> and last but definitely not, definitely not least, Michael Gott. Well, she's still here. But still, Reverend Sharon Lynn is I didn't make this list, no. Um, and also, our long term members, of course, it would be Bert if he were here, or Hen. Lawrence, now, Lawrence D'Souza. Now, I've heard that Lawrence was, has been here like over 30 something years. Yeah. Wow. I was going to tell him I haven't done anything consistently in my life for 30 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's anyone else here who I may have forgotten because I didn't make it. Anybody who I've forgotten that has been here for more than 20 years, would you please stand so we can celebrate you as well? <laughs> On behalf of everyone who has come after all of you, um, I'd like, I just like to say thank you for laying down the foundation for helping this place to be what it is today and for allowing us to build upon that foundation that you've laid down. Thank you very much. Now, would you please welcome to the stage Michael Gott, Lainey Bernstein, and the CSF Thank you. 
this new space, but really every single word rings true for the whole of Center of Spiritual Living Dallas, no matter what building we're in. Love in
As president of Centers for Spiritual Living, Reverend John coordinates the services and communications between our centers, ministries, and the rest of the global organization. He and his wife, Reverend Barbara, are founding co-ministers of Center for Spiritual Living in Asheville, North Carolina, a dynamic, heart-centered spiritual community of approximately 350 members. Reverend John was ordained by the Reverend Terry Cole Whitaker in 1988. He is the author of the book, Five Steps to Freedom, an Introduction to Spiritual Mind and Treatment, and has been a devoted religious scientist since first attending the Miami Church of Religious Science in 1984. His life's purpose is to reveal and to release the power of divine presence within everyone he meets. Reverend John is passionate about teaching, practicing, supporting the expansion of science of mind in the world. He is particularly interested in the involvement of the men's consciousness movement and has lent his skills and leadership to that effort by leading a myriad of men's support groups and retreats. And tonight, he is here to support our center and celebrating our 50th anniversary. Please join me in welcoming the Reverend Dr. John Waterhouse. I'm allergic to podiums. <laughs> wow, this is so wonderful. You have such a beautiful space. This is such an amazing ministry. I am so grateful that that symbol is in the center of who you are. I love that symbol. Thank you for being here. Uh, but I have to say, I, I am confused about one thing. We had that early presentation up here. Which is the real Dr. Petra? <laughs> This one had the vestments on. I mean, red is really cool. <laughs> 50 years. 50 years. Our center is 18 years old. We started in our living room uh, in January of 1995. But 50 years, that's amazing. And as I was watching the video of, with Bert, my first thought was, I want a Bert. <laughs> probably one in our community. And I'm going to start looking at everybody. Are you Bert? Someone that can tell that story and remember that history so many years later. That is so wonderful. That is so rich. There's something just so divine in knowing that people can remember. And it, you know, hard times. Tell, show me uh, anything worth doing that doesn't have some challenges. So that's nothing. The fact that you move beyond that and do something extraordinary is what's amazing. And I want you to know that there are communities that are older than Center for Spiritual Living Dallas. But that's part of the game too. That's part of the experience. We want communities at different ages. We don't want them all to be a hundred years old, but wow, isn't it wonderful that we have 50, 60, 70, even 90 year old communities. We have communities that are older than our movement actually. And isn't that wonderful? And isn't it wonderful that we have one year old ministries that are beginning and burgeoning something new? We have to do it all these kinds of ways. But here's the, the main thing that I get as I experience who you are and come into your space to be with you. This that I'm so honored to do is that you are creating a model for how these younger communities can be in 50 years. They can use who you are to set an intention to have a mental equivalent as to what things will be like for them. I'm doing it. I'm sitting in this room going, okay, sure, 50 years, this kind of love, this kind of intention, absolutely. And one thing I'm very clear about as I experience and meet everyone here and know who you are as a spiritual community is there is an, an element of excellence that runs through everything here. Everything that you do is done first rate, top notch. And that's what we bring to this world is, is a sense that we can do things in a very, very 
beautiful and wonderful and elegant way. For our teaching is the most elegant teaching I know in the world. It teaches us that the divine dwells within us, that we are that divine creative presence in the world, and that as we speak our intention into the law, the law takes it and it creates it into our life. And as we are absolutely clear, and we have set aside the emotions that Bert spoke of, that what we get is the mirrored reflection of that understanding. And that when we do, things work. When we do it consciously, when we do it clearly, when we do it in community, it works. We have some 400 communities that are members of our organization right now. Little big ones, great big ones, and everything in between. But it's set up a spiritual living Dallas that can be a model for everything else that's going on in this movement so that we know that the excellence that is happening here can happen everywhere. So I want to thank you for showing up for continuing to do this work, for coming to classes, for learning these principles, for applying them to your lives. So that not only can you have this wonderful community here, but so that each one of you and so many more go out in to different parts of North Texas and touch more lives and change more lives and then move to other places in the country and in the world and touch more lives and help more lives transform. We are not a rigid movement. It isn't just about what happens on this sacred ground, but what is taken from this sacred ground out into the world that truly makes a difference. That's who we are. That's what we're doing as an organization. When we were about five years old in Asheville, we weren't actually in Asheville. We were, uh, our, 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 the word Asheville wasn't even in our name. We were in, in a rural part of North Carolina called Fairview. Fairview is the most common uh, community name in the United States. <laughs> but it was pretty, and we liked it, and we, we have been come known at that time of our, of our history as being in the cornfield because there was a silage corn, a feed corn that was grown all around us, and when it grew high enough, you couldn't see the building. So, <laughs> however, we did some wonderful things there, and one thing that we did was we visioned for a new center. And two of our practitioners found a piece of property, or had a piece of property, and they uh, they helped us uh, manage to acquire that and to build our facility. And we have a beautiful sanctuary and two two-story buildings. And we actually have an elementary school right now, which we're very proud of. And that has come through this 18 years of work that we're doing. Thank you, I got that. Um, but on that particular uh, night that we introduced this idea of buying this land and building these buildings, at least the first couple of buildings, we cast a vision about how there were people in the city of Asheville that were looking for us and how we wanted them to find us. And that sounded like a really great plan. And then there was a, this uh, older gentleman who's now since made his transition who was sitting in the back and he had had a stroke and he, was, he walked with a walker and he stood up and wanted to be recognized that night. And he said, here's what you need to know and you haven't realized this yet. Is what you're doing is for you, yes. And what you're doing is for those people in Asheville that are looking for this center and this teaching, yes, absolutely. But what you are doing tonight as you choose to move forward with this dream is you are touching the lives of people 100 years from now. Whoa. The room fell silent and we were captured and captivated by that idea. The people that we would never know would have their lives changed because of what we were doing there. And that's exactly what you were doing. By growing this community, by supporting this community, you're changing lives 50 years from now when this community is 100 years old. So what you do is noble. It is essential to our movement and to the transformation of humanity. Now, we're not, we're not taking an offering tonight, right? <laughs> so all of you will be in church tomorrow morning. <laughs> here, here, not no, etc. Right? And we'll celebrate that and we'll keep doing this and loving this and making this that we do as religious scientists a way of changing the world. I'm so grateful for who you are and all that you do. God bless you. And thank you. <laughs> Okay.
Good evening. I'm happy to be here tonight. I'm happy to be playing with the best band on the planet. Steve Curry. I'd also like to thank Michael Gottman because um, when Michael was here, he would call me up every once in a while and ask me to come and fill in for him while he was out of town playing somewhere else. And I appreciate you introducing me via just asking me to come and fill in for you uh, to the center and the teaching. Um, I, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I didn't really know what I was going to sing a couple of days ago. Uh, and I listened to Pandora a lot, and this song kept cycling back through. And a couple of days ago, it cycled again, and I thought, oh, what a perfect song for celebrating the first 50 years and looking forward to the next 50 years. I'll be 100. <laughs> <laughs> you guys join me in 50 years, we'll do this again. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. 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 